let me ask you, do you have a, I didn't understand what greenfield investment means. Okay, so Julia, thank you for the question. Uh, the greenfield investments means basically that you are not acquiring control or buying stock, capital stock, uh, of an existing company in China, but you are creating a new company in China. Okay, so you are creating from scratch a new company that is operating in China. So, for instance, let me go back to my example of uh, my Italian company producing uh, uh, shoes in Italy. I, when I make a greenfield investments, what I do, I basically create a new company that is owned by me in China and is producing shoes or maybe clothes. Okay, if I want to diversify a little bit my business. But I, from scratch, open a new business there. I create a new company, I hire new people, I, I buy new machines, and I start a new production. On the contrary, when we talk about merger and acquisition, I'm not creating a new company. I'm acquiring control of a company that already exists in China and is producing shoes or clothes or whatever. Is it clearer the difference, Julia? You want me to... Explain it again, or it is, or, 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 or it, 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 now I understand. Very good. Now, the, this difference is also what I was saying before. It explains why host governments, I mean government that are receiving the foreign direct investments, like greenfield investment much more than merger and acquisition. Why? Well, because when you do a foreign direct investments and it is a greenfield investment, you hire new people in that country, you buy new machines in that country, and so on and so forth. On the contrary, when you make a merger and acquisition, you are not hiring new people, you are not buying new machines, simply the person who has control of those people and of those machines is not anymore an entrepreneur from the host country, from China, but is an entrepreneur from the uh, foreign country, from Italy. Okay. This distinction, for instance, should clarify uh, also the reason why, even in the standard press, think about Italy, for instance, for those who are familiar. Do you have an example that can explain us uh, that is exactly related to what I was saying? It is an example that comes out every time in Italy, every one or two years, there is this problem uh, and, uh, and has been discussed several times. It is a, an actual example of a, a, a foreign direct investment, in a sense, that uh, is uh, uh, sort of like, um, is not very welcome by governments, the independent, the independently of who is actually the ruling party. So it's not welcome, and therefore they always try to find other solutions to avoid that these foreign direct investments which is a merger and acquisition take place. Any idea, any example of, uh, with respect to Italy that uh, can give an idea about this? Nobody wants to try? Do you have in mind a company in Italy that is always under the uh, option of being acquired by foreign companies, but the government try always to find an alternative solution not for, for this company not to be acquired by foreign companies, or oh, there is always a very exactly who who thought who was talking, Michele exactly. Alitalia is a good example. Ilva is also another good example, and Alitalia Nicolò uh, is also a good example. Exactly. So all these companies are companies where uh, there is a bargaining between the governments and the foreign company on the possibility for the foreign company to acquire control of these companies. It can be ILVA, it can be Alitalia. These are cases a bit exceptional because there are cases in which uh, uh, these companies are, are almost uh, going to be uh, bankrupt. So uh, there is also a problem of uh, uh, sort of like avoiding that uh, these people, people working in ILVA or working in Alitalia, becomes unemployed. Okay, so the story for in this case is a bit different, but still, you can clearly see, that, so the reason why there is this strong aversion uh, with respect on the side of the government for these foreign owners to acquire control of these companies is that is because these investments 
uh, do not extend the productive capacity of Italy, do not hire new people, uh, do not uh, allow the company uh, probably to uh, buy or to create new establishment, but simply you change the nationality of the owner that is controlling all those assets. The government would like much more some Italian entrepreneur or some Italian investor to buy either Ilva or Alitalia. I'm sure about that. Okay? Because, of course, if it is the owner is Italian, then, of course, uh, it's still sort of like the ownership of those assets remain within the same, uh, within the same country. The, the approach of the government was completely different, on the contrary, uh, when, uh, uh, when it, it, it is usually completely different, and there are examples in Italy as well, when the foreign company wants to make a greenfield investment. So one example uh, that uh, was in the press uh, some years ago uh, was the creation of a new, um, let's say, um, uh, of a new uh, company uh, that was hiring a lot of uh, software programmer, uh, and that was an investment that was made by Apple, I think, was in somewhere uh, close to Napoli, okay, it's close to Naples. Um, then there was a big discussion whether this investment was actually what was meant to be at the beginning, so it was lower, they hired less people than they were supposed to do, but apart from this, the clear point is that when the company announced that was opening a new company, a new branch of Apple in uh, Campania, in, around Napoli, and they wanted to hire new people, this decision was always very much welcomed by the government. So all the government uh, ministers were very happy about this because this created new employment opportunities and also new business opportunities in the receiving country, in the host countries that at that time was Italy. Okay, so in that case was Italy. So, of course, the, uh, the type of foreign direct investments, either greenfield or... Um, merger and acquisition has significant differences in terms of the way in which it can be, uh, the effect that he can have on the receiving country. Okay, and it's important to take this into consideration when we will discuss the effects of multinational companies, which is, which will happen at the end of this course.